by day, the plot against Syria becomes uncovered. After the so-called Al-Nusra Front was listed as a world terrorist organization, press reports from Turkey and the West came to assert that Turkey has become the main gate of such dark terrorism into Syria. Western mass media received reports of interviews by their correspondents that showed how the terrorists entered Syria via Turkey to commit their crimes. A reporter told France press agency that the terrorists infiltrated into Syria from Antioch. They are intensively deployed along the Syrian-Turkish border. Their clothes catch attention in the markets of Antioch. They are publicly smuggled into Syria by Turkish spies. The village of Atama has become a center of terrorists. The reporter also met two terrorists, an Egyptian and an Algerian, in addition to others from Libya and non-Arab countries. Another report came from the International Crisis Group and asserted that foreign terrorists are directly involved in fighting in Syria. They belong to extremist jihadists. Syrian Arab army units clashed with a group of terrorists belonging to Al-Qaeda in a Tadaman quarter in Damascus, killing several of them and confiscating their weapons. In Damascus countryside, Syrian Arab army units continued their operations against the terrorist hideouts. They killed several terrorists in Havan Lawamid, destroyed a mortar cannon, anti-craft weapons and a vehicle carrying a heavy machine gun. Another unit of our armed forces carried out a qualitative operation in Narbin, Misraba and Zamatka, killing many terrorists including Ahmed Al-Khalid, Abu Khudr, Abdullah Zaghloul, Fuad al Asadi, and Samih Lihan. While in Daraya, our armed forces killed several terrorists, including Ziyad al Sayyid, Ahmed, and Ghayf Kanaan. In Madaya, our armed forces carried out another qualitative operation that led to the death and wounding of several terrorists, including Ahmed Libi and Muhammad Zubayr. In Aleppo, a unit of the army and armed forces carried out an operation that led to the death of 20 terrorists in El Ramun. Another unit of security forces clashed with a terrorist group that attempted to attack the Greek hospital. The clash led to the death of one terrorist, the wounding of two others and the confiscation of weapons and military equipment. In Hama countryside, Syrian Arab army units captured one of the most dangerous wanted terrorists there. The security forces stormed a terrorist hideout in as -Salami. The security forces confiscated weapons and liberated the kidnapped citizen Ismail Mohammed Diab. <laughs> Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov announced that the upcoming meeting on Syria, which is to be held on the level of Deputy Foreign Ministers of Russia and the US, with the participation of the UN envoy to Syria, Akhdar al Ibrahimi, will take place today and tomorrow. Lavrov pointed out that he met the US Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and Ibrahimi in Dublin and that they agreed on holding a special meeting for experts on the level of deputy foreign ministers to hold intensive talks. He stressed that Russia is ready for such meetings if the Geneva Declaration is the basis for the talks without ultimatums or preconditions. Lavrov revealed that there are unclean attempts by some countries known for distorting facts to portray Russia's stance towards the situation in Syria contrary to reality. He stressed that the need to force all sides to lay down arms and sit to dialogue is present instead of the unveiling and endless talk about the departure of the Syrian leadership. The follow-up committee on the National Dialogue emerged from Tehran Conference held its first meeting in Damascus today. Representatives of political and popular parties participated in the meeting which focused on means of launching the comprehensive national dialogue and finding a peaceful solution to the crisis in Syria. The participants also discussed establishing communication bridges among all political forces inside and outside Syria, preparing a national dialogue table based on firm principles, following up on the stages achieved by the National Dialogue Conference in Tehran, and launching a Syrian national initiative for reconciliation away from foreign interventions. In turn, chairman of the National Initiative for Syrian Kurds, Omar Osi, called for forming a political office and a secretary for the follow-up committee representing all the participating popular and political spectrums to help permanently follow up the committee's work. Members of the People's Assembly, one of them, Khaled Laboud, said that the follow-up committee is open to all those who want to participate in it and contribute to reproducing the Syrian political scene to help solve the crisis in Syria. 
for his part, head of the National Youth for Justice and Development Party, Badwin Ibrahim, called for real work to combat corruption and find solution to the crisis. Representative of the opposition third movement, Mazen Mughrabiyeh, called for holding a serious national dialogue conference in Syria, considering that the problem currently facing Syria is a political one that should be solved.